It is one o'clock. We are live. Audio and video is up. Welcome back to Statics. Today we're gonna do more 3D. Um, as you're aware, we had a little, or uh, a couple typos, whatnot, in the example uh, on Wednesday, and I said, you know what? Let's just do another one. And I've got the example worked out, so hopefully <laughs> we don't have as many uh, issues. I guess that's what I get for uh, saying, oh, we can just do the example on the fly instead of having it worked out in advance to make sure all the the answers uh, come out correctly. Um, so uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. I extended the homework deadline to Monday. Uh, as you're aware, um, uh, if you turned it in early, that's fine. And if you want to uh, uh, tweak it or refine it, you can resubmit up until Monday. Uh, I will post the solution to that homework maybe um, uh, sometime later that day. I mean, I, I won't have them graded in, uh, uh, you know, after, but I'll, but I'll make sure that you have the solution. I have gone ahead and posted the review slides for exam two. And basically what I did is I took all of the lectures that, um, you know, between exam one and exam two and sort of pulled out the really, really, you know, super important slides out of each one. And so there's um, maybe about, you know, eight or nine slides that have all the really, really relevant uh, formulas and expressions and whatnot. Uh, so uh, again, you know, we have a re exam review on Monday. So, you know, uh, come prepared with questions and the exam delivery will be the exact same as it was uh, for exam one, you know, uh, opens for 60 minutes and, and so on and so forth. Um, I'll let you review that. Uh, let's, let's get into 3D land. Um, we're going to, uh, you know, go through the same process we did before. Um, you know, we're still going to use the, uh, the, uh, three or the six equations, six unknowns is what it's ultimately going to be. Although ultimately what we'll do is we'll just sum up all of our moment vectors. And then when it's all said and done, sum up all of our force vectors. Um, we're going to use the same uh, equations of equilibrium or, or, or sorry, boundary conditions that we, we have in the past uh, or we did on Wednesday. Um, and, and with that, I kind of just want to get right into a problem. Um, this is a, uh, a, a similar reactions problem. It's got a little bit more going on. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't want to say if it's, it's got a, a little bit more going on. It, I mean, uh, it's probably it's got just as many unknowns as the last one. We're still going to have to solve a two by two uh, uh, system of equations. Um, your homework assignment, you can actually get around not using a, a system of equations. So your homework assignment's actually a little easier. Um, but uh, I figured, you know, just to, to put uh, uh, everybody's mind at ease as to, to how straightforward this is. And to be clear, this is a really straightforward process. I know the problem looks a little uh, uh, funky, but really all it is is just, you know, planning it out, um, writing your position vectors, writing your force vectors, doing your cross products. And, you know, just it, it, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, and so I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, but before I do, I want to read the problem out. So. We have a 48 inch boom that is being held by a ball and socket joint. So a ball and socket joint, again, that's basically a pen to connection in 3D. Uh, and so at joint C, um, there's gonna be three unknowns. So a CX, a CY, and a CZ. Uh, so a, a three uh, force vector or a three component vector right there at C. Um, and it's being held by two cables. Now, uh, what's going on is there's a cable BF and then there's a cable DAE. So the point with this problem is that uh, cable, so it looks like there's two cables. It looks like there's cable AD and then cable AE. But those cables are, they carry the same tension. So while we're going to have a different force vector uh, for each uh, 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 cable, for AD and for AE, those two vectors are going to carry the same magnitude. So it's going to be the same magnitude, just different directions. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to uh, have the same magnitude for those. And ultimately what we want to find is the magnitude of the tension in each cable and then the support reaction at C. And so uh, similar to the problem we did last time. Uh, and so with that, let's just uh, get right into it. Let me stop share and bring up the notebook. Okay, so let me um, let me get my screen ready for this. All right, and like I said, I got the uh, the calculations worked out for me right here. So hopefully we don't have any uh, uh, glitches like we did last time. 
Okay, so let me, um, let me get some chords out of the way. Okay, um, let's see, auto hide the ribbon. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is with this problem, we're going to um, uh, do this problem like we did last time, but maybe the first thing we ought to do is, is start defining our unknowns. Let me use my red pen uh, for here. So by unknowns, I mean the unknown forces. Okay, and so uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing those out. I'm going to start at point C. So there's going to be a a vector at point C, and it's going to have an x, y, and a z component. So maybe we'll call this C x, C y, C z. Um, and so maybe I'll write this, you know, right here. Maybe, maybe here's what I'll do. I'll say forces. Okay, and so I'm going to have a C vector, which is going to have CX, CX. I plus CYJ plus CZK. All right. And so there's one vector. Another vector is this one right here. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll call that one W uh, because for, for a weight. So can somebody on the chat or with your microphone, somebody tell me what is that in vector notation? Three twenty J, negative three twenty J. Exactly right. So zero I minus three twenty J plus zero K in pounds. Okay. All right. Uh, now what we're gonna have um, for our tensile components is we're gonna have three vectors. Okay, and I want to be clear on that. We're gonna have three separate vectors. Um, we're gonna have a tensile force in each of the three cables, and you can define this however you want. To me, I, I think it'll probably be easier to sort of define them this way. So let's do that and that. Maybe I can draw those a little better. Maybe I'll try and draw those directly on the ropes. Okay, so we'll call this one, I don't know, TBF. We'll call this one right here T, what is that, um, AD, maybe call this one T, A, E, something like that, okay? And uh, what I'll do is let's write those alphabetically, and so we're going to have T, A, D, T, A, E, and T, B, F. Now, um, the way I'm going to handle this is, is, is this. So uh, the two cable, the first two cables, the TAD and the TAE, they both carry the same magnitude. So maybe I'll call that T1. And then the other cable carries a separate magnitude. We'll call that T2. Now, each one has its own uh, unique unit vector. But again, same magnitude. And the reason why is because it's actually the same cable, right? It's literally a, a single piece of rope tied from point D to point A and then back to point E. So it's actually the same rope uh, connected through all three points, hence why they have the, uh, the same magnitude. All right. Now let's uh, let's continue this discussion by looking at the position vectors that we're going to need. I'm cheating there. I know. Okay. So the position vectors. Okay. So in order to determine the position vectors.
we're going to need to ask ourselves, where do we want to sum moments? In other words, you know, what we're trying to find are the R vectors for R cross F. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. Um, so I want somebody to help me out. Looking at this problem, and, and this problem has all of our forces, both known and, known and unknown. Uh, help me out. Um, where do you think would be a good place to sum moments? And keep in mind, the tension AD and the tension AE both have the same magnitude. So where do you think would be a good place to sum moments for this problem? And, and the key is, whenever you're summing moments, you're going to sum moments where many of your unknowns intersect. You know, you want, you want, when you sum moments, you want to try and eliminate as many unknowns as possible. I'm going to subtract some stuff here on my whiteboard. Anybody have an answer for me? At C, exactly right. You're going to want to sum moments at C. Because here's the thing. I propose that this problem has five unknowns. Okay. What are the five unknowns? CX, CY, CZ, T1, and T2. Those are the five unknowns for this problem. And if I can sum moments at C, three of those unknowns go away. Right, because all of the uh, 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 forces, the CX, CY, CZ, they all go through point C, so they don't generate any moment. So if I sum moments at C, I'm going to be dealing with two equations, two unknowns. So if I look at this problem, somebody help me out. How many position vectors am I going to need? Like, so so think, you know, I've got, you know, I've got all the forces which go through C, which I don't have to deal with those. So if I'm summing moments at C, how many uh, position vectors am I going to need? I'm going to need two. Exactly right. I'm going to need one. To B. And I'm going to need another one. To A. So somebody help me out. We have R, A, so 2A from point C, and R to B from point C, because we're summing moments at C. So maybe I'll put some moments here. So somebody help me out. What is R, A going to be? And I'm actually, I'm going to track this on the whiteboard as well. So somebody help me out with RA. Forty-eight K. That's exactly right. So zero I plus zero J plus forty-eight K, and that's in inches. And so if you're good with that, somebody tell me BC. And while you're doing that, I'm going to put that up here on the whiteboard. And 30, exactly right. So 0i plus 0j plus 30k. It's exactly right. Okay. So maybe I'll erase that one because I might need that space here in a bit. Okay. And if you look here on the whiteboard, uh, it, just in case you couldn't see, all I'm doing is just tracking all of my uh, force vectors and position vectors and all the key information here, just so I don't have to scroll back and forth and and whatnot. You probably don't have to worry about that on your um, on your notebook paper or whatnot. Okay, so this is zero i plus zero j plus 30K. 
And so far, so good. No issues on signs. <laughs> I like to see. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to copy and paste this image one more time because, uh, actually, I think I can just hit paste here. Yep. Because there's one thing that we have to deal with right now, uh, and that's these pesky uh, distance vectors. Okay, and the reason that we need to deal with the distance vectors is because, you know, if I scroll up, I've got, you know, you know, this is a statics problem. So I need sum of forces and sum of moments. I've already got my forces defined. They're right there. Although the forces, uh, the cable tensions are defined as a function of these lambda uh, vectors, which I haven't figured out yet. An A, D, an A, E, and a B, F. Um, once I figure those out, I'm golden because I've got my sum of forces and my sum of moments, which sum of moments is just R cross Fs, and I've already got all my Rs figured out. So ultimately, I need these distance vectors to determine lambdas, okay? And if you scroll up to, you know, uh, I, I had three vectors that I need to figure out, an AD, an AE, and a BF. Okay, so let's uh, let's take AD first. All right, can I scroll up for a sec? Absolutely. Uh, to this part right here. Sure, and, and don't hesitate. We got plenty of time. We got plenty of time. Let me know when you're good. Awesome, thank you. All right, so uh, our distance vectors. Okay, AD. All right, now we're, gonna, we're not going to have any issues with signs this time. We're going to get it right the first time. So AD, somebody tell me the position vector AD. Okay, and so we're going to start at A, go to D. So how far do you go in the X? How far do you go in the Y? How far do you go in the Z? While you're doing that, I'll start writing force vectors over here. Negative 20i and negative 48k. That's exactly right. Okay, so negative 20i plus 0j minus 48k. All right, so somebody else give me AD, or sorry, AE. Twenty J. Hold on. Wait. 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 There's a little dialog box here. Well, we're you're right on the uh, J part, but is that it? Hold on. I think you're missing something there. Yeah. 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 No. No. A E. We're looking at we're looking at this one right here. Twenty J and negative forty eight K. There we go. Exactly right. All right. Somebody else, give me BF. Somebody give me BF. Sixty-five 
16i, negative, negative 30k, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. And that's correct. That's exactly what I have here. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to determine some unit vectors. And that's just lambda is V divided by its own magnitude. And so let's see if we can, let's see if we can do this one pretty quick. So So what's the magnitude of vector AD? Can somebody do that count for me real quick and tell me what you get? And, oh, maybe I should also put here that these are inches. Don't forget those units. Okay, 52, 52 inches. So if that's the case, Lambda AD equals, and so here's what I'm going to do. Let's see if we can do this kind of quickly. Okay, so we have negative 20 over 52i plus 0j minus 48 over 52k. And so Lambda AD is... Um, what is that? Minus 5 over 13 times I plus 0J minus, and what is that? 12 over 13 K. I think that's right because you have 48 over 52, divide both of those. You have 12 and 13, you have 52 cards in a debt. Um, so yeah, so that's our unit vector here. Um, and so if I wanted to write the tension vector, it would be T1 times all of that. Yeah. Okay. So real quick. Just to show you something real quick. So I'm trying to track all of my uh, vectors up here. So here's my position vectors. And as for my force vectors, there's going to be five for this problem. There's going to be C, which is CX plus CY plus CZ. Uh, there's the W, 0, minus 320 in this. And what about TAD? Well, TAD is going to be T1 times the unit vector, which is going to be minus 5 thirteenths I plus 0j minus 12 thirteenths k. Okay. And so what I'm going to see is if I can fill all of these in, and so I'll have all of my force vectors for the entire problem. So again, just trying to keep everything organized. Okay, there we go. All right, so now let's see if you could check, uh, do this by observation. If the magnitude of vector AD was 52, what's the magnitude of vector AE? Oh. I'll do that over here. It's also 52, there you go. So lambda AD is 0i plus that minus, and so that's going to be 0i plus 5 over 13 j minus 12 thirteenths K, and then 
sorry, A, there we go, that's A, E. And so the tension vector for that cable is, again, it's going to be T1 times... Times that. Okay. Zero I plus five thirteenths minus twelve thirteenths. Okay. Last one is BF. Okay, so BF. What's the magnitude of BF? So We've got 16, 0, and 30. Talking about this vector right here. Thirty four. So therefore, lambda BF is going to be 16 over 34I plus 0J minus 30 over 34K. And I think I could simplify that a little bit because I can factor a 2 out. So 16 over 34, that's going to be 8 over 17. And then 30 over 34 is 15 over 17 minus. Yeah. Okay. Put that up here. There we go. Okay. And so... Now remember, the first two cables had the same tension. The second cable does not. It has a different value. Okay. All right. So ultimately what we were after is trying to rigorously define... those forces there. Okay, so we've got each of our three unknowns figured out, and we also have all of our position vectors and all of our force vectors. So we pretty much have everything figured out. I'll scroll back down because I'm sure some of you were still writing. Um, I'm going to give you all a sec, and then if anybody has any questions, let me know, and then we'll, we'll keep on chugging. And meanwhile, I don't know if you can pull the camera up on the screen, but you can see I've got all of my five uh, force vectors and my two position vectors fig already figured out and, and tabulated right here. So everything's kind of, kind of neatly organized. What I'm then going to do is look at the moments. So maybe what I'll do is, is just split that right there and say now the moments. So R cross with F. All right. Let me know if you need me to scroll up or if you have any questions. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to, to handle that. Okay. So I want to look at the moments, and, and I kind of want to start off by looking at the moments from a planning perspective. In other words, I, I want to make sure that we do all of the moments that we need to do, okay? So here's my point. We are summing moments. Remember, keep in mind, we're summing moments right here.
Okay, so that's where we're summing moments is, is that hinge. Okay, now I'm, I'm just going to blanketly ask, how many cross products are we going to have to do? Let's just plan that out. How many of them are we going to need to do? We've got three. Now, where are you getting the three? So there, there, there'd be one for each of our tensile forces, right? One for TAD, one for TAE, one for TBF, but there's one more. There's that, there's the weight. Well, we've got, we do have two, we do have two position vectors, but we've got, so remember, a moment is generated by a force. And so the question becomes, how many forces are generating moment at point C? And, and I propose there's four of them. There's the one from this cable, the one from that cable, the one from this cable, and the one from that weight. Okay, so there's going to be four of them that we need to do. And so I propose that we're going to have a cross product for, uh, not AB, sorry, the moment generated by this cable, the cross product of the moment generated by that cable, the cross product of the moment uh, generated by this cable, and then the moment, uh, the cross product by the weight. And so there's four of these that we're going to need to do, okay? Um, and so before we start evaluating them, let's see if we could figure this out. And, and I'll help you out with the first one, okay? I propose that for AD, for, you know, we're talking about this force right there, that we're going to cross this with a force vector. The vec the, the the position vector is going to be that one because we're starting from C and we're going to that point right there. So that's the vector that we need. So that's our uh, 2A from C. And we cross that with that vector. Okay. And so that's one we're going to need to do. I'm not going to do them right now. I just want to plan this out. So somebody tell me how we're going to evaluate each of these. Let's start off with AE. Somebody tell me how we're going to do AE. What, what's this cross product going to be right there? I'll make that line a little lower. Now, what do I, what do I put right there? R-A-C-T-A-E, that's exactly right. So R-A-C-T-A-E. Oh, I already did that. Exactly right. So somebody do, do the next one. While you're doing that, I'm going to put my space here on the board to write all these out. RBC TBF, there we go. And it's the BC because we've got to go to point B now, not point A. And then the last one. There we go. Exactly right. And so now, hopefully, you can start to see that, that this right here, this is going to be pretty valuable. So off to the side, I just said, here's all my position vectors. Here's all my force vectors. And so when I do these 
hopefully I'm not, you know, getting any signs wrong because I've got everything written all in one place. So it makes the organization uh, a little easier. So let's do these one at a time. Okay, so so let's let's um, R A C was uh, zero I plus zero J plus forty eight K and then T A D is T1 times minus 5 thirteenths 0j and then 12 minus 12 thirteenths k k k goes in the inside and so when you're doing a cross product with you can leave the T1 out and then just add it in later when you when you do your cross product that way you can use your Casio so the MAD is R cross F so that's I J K 0 0 48 and then minus 5 thirteenths 0 minus 12 thirteenths but don't forget the T1 multiplying everything. So let's just do the numbers. Somebody tell me what you're getting for the numbers. And so you can do this by hand. You can break out the Casio, however you want to do this. Maybe I'll, I'll walk through this one. So we have the I times a pile of junk minus the J times the pile of junk plus the K times a pile of junk. And then remember, we cross out the row and the column. There we go. There we go. I, I think you see it. Yeah, so this is, um, so what do we got? That's a zero. This is, you know, minus uh so, yeah, uh, it's minus, but then plus, yeah, 240 over 13, and then that's zero, yeah. So, and then the, all that is T1. Yeah, so, yeah, I got, um, uh, yeah, what was it? Uh, minus 240 uh, over 13 T1. J. That's what I got. And it looks like uh, Mr. Ashworth got the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here on the whiteboard. And in time while I'm writing this on the whiteboard, let's see if he can do the next one. And the next one is the same position vector. But now it's a new force vector. Uh, and the force vector is... Uh, T1, zero I, and then positive negative. So maybe I'll just write it like this. So if you cross those two, what do you get? And then the first one here, I'll go ahead and write this down. It's uh, minus... All right, so we're getting for MAE.
And if you got any questions, please, you know, let me know. Two forty over thirteen IT one. Um, that's what I got. The only thing is that I got a negative. And I want to check and make sure if anybody else got that. Because I got, um, so here, I'll, on the 48. You did, so, so, um, uh, so, so, yeah, so. So you got that. That's, that's what I got. Can somebody second me on that and make sure that that's what uh, that's what you got? Because that's what I have here. And second, uh, Mr. Brown as well. Anybody else getting this? Okay, good deal. All right, next one. We do the RBF. Okay, and so RBF was uh, 30K. But the tension, or sorry, BC. BC, because all the vectors are to the same point. Now the vector is different because we're getting T2, and then it's uh, 8 seventeenths, 0, and then minus 15 seventeenths. And so what do you get when you cross those? Like I said, we already planned everything out, so the rest is just chugging it out. And so somebody else besides Mr. Uh, Brown and Mr. Ashworth, we've been relying on them. I want to make sure everybody else is, is engaged as well. And so while you're doing that, I'll clearly write that's I and that's J. While you all are figuring that one out for me, let's do the next one. And this one's going to be W. Is it minus 320? All right, has anybody got uh, MBF? All right. Um, I got the same answer, although I got positive. Check your um, 515, uh, check your um, uh, 15, 17, so make sure it's negative. And lastly, anybody got a W or an MW?
Anybody got an MW for me? Ninety six hundred I. That's what I got. I got ninety six hundred because that's not a variable. Like we know how much the weight is. We know it's three hundred twenty pounds. So the, yeah, I got a positive ninety six hundred I. That's what I got. Okay. All right. So that's really the hardest part. The next is just proper bookkeeping. So let's walk through the rest of it, and I think you'll find the rest is is pretty easy. Okay. So. First thing we're going to do is, so we're going to be applying static equilibrium. Let's start off with the sum of the moments. You always want to start off with the sum of the moments because the whole point of summing moments at C was to eliminate as many unknowns. So we always want to do this first. So we have AD. AE, we have BF, and we have W. So what I like to do is I like to rewrite them, but I like to rewrite them like sort of stacking the I terms aligned, stacking the J terms, and so on and so forth. So this one was minus 240 over 13T1 times I. And this MW was 9,600 times I. And then the AD term was just minus 240 over 13T1J. And then this is positive 240 over 17 times T2 times K. Okay. And... The nice thing about writing it like this, again, is you can take all of your components here and say that this is the moments in the X direction and take all of these and say this is the moments in the Y direction. Now, here's also a really nice thing about this problem is that you can break out the Casio if you want, but you actually don't really need to. See, if I sum moments in the X direction first, what do I get? I get... Uh, so what am I doing? I'm summing up all the multiples. Uh, wait. Oh, it would, but I wrote that incorrectly. It was J. Whoops. You're exactly right. But that was J. I wrote that incorrectly. I screwed up because if you go back up here, we got we got that was J. And so that's what happens when you accidentally write A. See, again, proper bookkeeping. Thank you. All right. When you sum moments in the X direction, all you're doing is saying all the stuff multiplying I's has to equal zero. And so that's um, uh, negative 240 over 13 T1 plus 9600 equals zero. Well, I don't have a two equations, two unknown situation. I can just directly solve for T1, right? So bring the 9,600 over, multiply by the reciprocal, and what you're going to get is you're going to get a T1 value of 520 or 520 pounds. That's pretty easy. Summing moments in the Y direction, you're going to get 240 over 13 T1 plus 240 over 17 T2. Well, we already know what T1 is. We just figured that out. So minus 240 times 520 over 13 plus 240 over 17 T2. Pretty easy at this point, right? Solve for T2 and you're going to get a T2 is, chug that out, 680 pounds. And that's, that's, um, sorry, that is static equilibrium along 
the X uh, or, or you know solving for your moments. Now, if you look at force equilibrium, and I want to chug this out really quickly. So summing forces equals zero. What do we have? Well, we have a C, we have a W, and then we have TAD, TAE, TBF. Now, remember, the tensile vectors were some magnitude times a lambda. Well, we just solved for the TI components. We, we just got T1 and T2. So what I can do is I can just go back up here and say, okay, TAD. I got T1. I've got the unit vector and just multiply that out. And so when you do TAD, you end up getting like negative 200I plus 0J minus 480K. And that's just saying that T1 is 520, multiply all that out. I can do the same thing here. TBF. So I know I'm going a little fast, but we're, we're running out of time here. And so all I'm doing is just taking the unit vectors, multiplying them by T1 and T2. So hopefully that, that should be uh, pretty clear. I've got the W's, or the W components. And then my only unknown is the CX. What do I do with that? Take each of those components, sum them up, set them equal to zero, solve. And so what you end up getting is C is uh, minus 120I plus 120J plus 1560. Okay. I know we were cutting it close on time. In fact, we're a little bit over, but, um, and I know I went a little fast, but does that make sense? Anybody have any questions on that? Again, I don't think it's hard. I think it's just, you know, chugging it out. I'll give everybody a second, then I'll call it because I know some of you probably have class after this. Oh, you're right. It is. It is. That's a typo. Thank you for that. That's exactly correct. Or I guess plus, although that doesn't really matter. You're exactly correct. That's just me being in a hurry. But yeah, and I also checked that this was a problem that came out of the textbook, and this answer matches what was in the textbook. So <laughs> I checked that. All right. If there's no other questions, hopefully, you know, between what we've done for the past little bit, that you should be a lot more comfortable with the homework assignment that's due on Monday. Monday, we're going to have an exam review. Come prepare questions, and we will... Um, uh, have our name on Wednesday. That's, uh, that's all I have. Everybody. I, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. I will see you all on Monday.